Well, we've got some big AI news here to cover in the world of Zoho, so let us jump on in. Last week, they were busy. They put out a handful of press releases as well as a webinar to announce and describe and kind of demo some of their new AI tools here. We're going to break these down into the Zia LLM, kind of like the chat-based interface that we're used to, Zia Agents, and then separately the Model Context Protocol. The MCP is probably the most technical, but is one of the ones I'm most excited about. So I'm going to try to show exactly what that's going to do. As we go through the news, essentially here, they've rolled out Zia LLM. It's going to start rolling out to early access users, I believe, full release by end of the year. This is an LLM that's trained with Zoho usage in mind, right? So this is one of those benefits of Zoho building this in-house is that from the ground up, right? They're structuring everything around its own knowledge of how Zoho works, right? So for those who have tried to use maybe ChatGPT to write Deluge in the past, you'll know it's pretty brutal. <laughs> it doesn't do a very good job. The idea here is that if you train an AI from day one to understand the Zoho ecosystem, it's going to work a lot better than something that has to make a lot of guesses or inferences about how Zoho works. They are going to be rolling out three models technically trained on different numbers of parameters. Essentially, not going to go too far down the rabbit hole there. There is such thing as overkill on parameters. Some requests are going to run faster and better on actually a smaller and tighter model. So they're going to have three different ones that are going to interact with your system. You should be able to choose those as well as Zoho will be able to automatically choose them based on the type of request that you have. They've also ruled out an ASR tool, automatic speech recognition. Theirs is particularly designed to work on a low amount of computer load. This is a pretty big deal. I don't know how many of you have used an ASR tool in the past, but if you're running one locally, like let's say you have Zoho Meeting downloaded and you have something like listening and transcribing, you can actually see a bit of a performance hit. As we look at that, I've got this other article pulled up just to demo this. This is a benchmark of their new ASR tool compared to others that are on the market. Generally speaking, it's pretty competitive with the existing Llama models. And again, is all designed to run on a low compute load. These are going to be deployed across US, India, and Europe first, and will roll out over the next couple months. Next one here is going to be the AI agents. So these, again, really excited to talk about them. Really what this is, is a few different things. One, you'll have the ability to ask Zia to go in and make customizations for you. We do have some videos on the channel about that. But what I think more people are excited about is really this full AI agent studio, right? So the whole idea of the AI agents is that they can interact with the system exactly like a user can. Zoho is going to roll out, I think it's about 50, 40 or 50 agents that are going to come out of the box that we'll cover again, kind of in the back half of the video. The studio is going to allow you to build them yourself, right? So again, if we jump over here, you're essentially creating an agent, you're loading in some set of knowledge, you're defining some tools and guardrails, right? Like, hey, certain things that you should never do, certain things that you should always do, integrating it via API and essentially allowing it to take actions on your behalf, right? So without even having to click a button, the agent can do that for you. Before we keep going, just a rapid fire request. If you're finding this useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. While you're down there, leave me a comment with what you're most excited about in the world of AI and Zoho and head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like some help with your Zoho installation. I do also want to highlight here the rollout of the MCP, aka Model Context Protocol. Now, don't get too concerned about the technical jargon here. Really what that means is that you're able to define within the system certain actions that an AI agent will commonly have to take. So Zoho has essentially created that model context protocol, which basically means if you have a user that says something like convert a lead, the MCP connects the intent of convert the lead to the system action of converting a lead. Right. So you're able to define these agents to take actions much more intelligently without you having to specifically tell it every little thing. Another big one, too, here is that as you're using an MCP, these actions happen natively via API. The two ways that an agent can press a button, right, is by actually simulating a browser action and clicking it or by hitting the API endpoint behind that button. Option two is much better because buttons move, right? If you're moved from the old UI of Zoho CRM 
to the CRM for everyone UI, you'll know that certain things are on different parts of the page. So it's much better if I can define a bot that's going to interact via API rather than having to go to like, you know, a certain grid of pixels and click a button. Right. So the MCP is basically going to allow us to build these automated workflows that are much more smooth and much more consistent. Right. So, again, you're just saying something like mark this deal as closed one and then schedule a call. It's going to go in. It knows what it's doing. You're able to see step by step what it's actually doing directly. And then you'll be able to go and check that outcome in the system. So we can see here something like follow up with the leads that went to this webinar that haven't responded. And so it'll make a series of queries, right, to essentially check, okay, who satisfies those criteria and what do I need to do next? So really excited about the MCP that's going to allow us to define those agentic workflows much more cleanly. Because again, you really want to avoid that scenario of like you're training it to click certain parts of the screen that that does have kind of a risk to it. Jumping into this next article, I do think it does a good job at kind of highlighting the point of having a model built internally. So there are a lot of open source models, right? You can grab something from Llama, you can use DeepSeek. The question is like, why would Zoho go out, buy a bunch of NVIDIA GPUs and train their own model? The whole idea here is that if you start with a really clear end goal in mind, you can build a better tool. And so rather than taking something open source like Llama and kind of retrofitting it onto the Zoho ecosystem, Zoho decided to build it out themselves because then from the very end, first setup of their model, it knows that Zoho portfolio, right? It knows what the CRM is used for. It knows a lot of the common customizations that people may be doing, right? So again, that goal is here, build it out for data analytics, engineering, customer experience, user experience, really everything across the board. When we think about LLMs, a lot of the ones that we've actually seen on the market so far are more designed for B2C than B2B. Now, again, these foundational models, your ChatGPT, your Gemini, they're very good. You can obviously use them for B2B. We use them that way internally. It helps us write proposals. It helps us clean up documentation. But at the end of the day, they were trained to be extremely broad models that are supposed to know everything in the world and deliver it to any different type of person at any different context level. That's really cool, but it also has the downside of not being very targeted, right? So the idea here is that if you create a model designed for B2B usage with deep contextual knowledge of the system in which it's going to operate, you can create a model that's more useful, right? And now is Zoho's, you know, LLM going to be able to write creatively? Like you can kind of get ChatGPT to do. Maybe not. Reality is that's not what we want out of it, right? I want it to be able to do things for me inside of Zoho. As well, just an always an important thing to keep in mind is that when Zoho does build these things themselves, it does reduce the cost versus licensing or paying for API tokens for third-party models. Having this internally will allow them to offer it at a much more competitive price point. Important to note with Zoho, the LLM is going to subscribe to all of their standard policies around data management. No customer data is going to be used to train this thing. It's all going to be kept completely on Zoho servers. So you're not going to be pinging out your data anywhere externally. Really, again, as we go down the list, I think agents are going to be one of the biggest ones that get people excited. These are going to, again, just automate those multi-step processes that you might be doing with code right now. To give an example, because I, I get asked a lot, like, well... If I'm going to have some type of agent and it's going to look at a lead and it's going to assign the lead appropriately, well, couldn't I just do that with a piece of deluge? Yes, mostly, but an agent can take in a lot more context. So let's say internally as an Ada, imagine I have two salespeople. One of them is really, really good on sales process and marketing, and the other might be really good at inventory, accounting, third-party integration. When a lead comes in, I could surely write a deluge script that checks what they need, like whatever the lead had typed into the description field, and it looks for certain keywords hard-coded inside of that, right? So it's looking for pipeline or closing rate, right? And if it sees those, it's going to go to salesperson A. If it sees something like integration, accounting, books, right, maybe it would go to person B. Thing is, for those who've written deluge, you can imagine what I would have to do there is basically take my description and run it through a long sequence of if-then statements looking for perfect matches of words, right? Not great, because at the end of the day, there are typos, there are synonyms, there's kind of an infinite length if-then statement if you really want to build that thing out perfectly. With something like an agent, an agent can open up a lead record, 
read the description, just like you copy pasted it to ChatGPT, and then know, hey, based on how I've read this, which salesperson would be better based on what the user has told me about each salesperson, right? So you can take a system that might be a really long, complicated if-then statement, but use the contextual knowledge of an LLM tool to automate it much more smoothly and in a way that's much more robust, ideally. That's kind of the thought behind a lot of these AI agents is to just add that context and understanding layer that an if-then statement in a daily script is just never going to know. So really excited about that. Back to this first article, if we do look all the way down here at the bottom in terms of the roadmap. So Zia LLM should be rolling out here over the next couple months. And really everything, their goal, it seems like, is to have Zia LLM as well as agents essentially rolled out by the end of 2025. This is a good time if you're not on that early access list at agents.zoho.com. You should be, right? Like, go ahead and just make sure you get on that list so that you get these as soon as humanly possible. Talking about agents, these are kind of the biggest use case I think that people are waiting for. We're going to have a bunch that are going to roll out off the shelf, included with the agent studio, really going through most of their applications. So we're going to hit a handful of these. So in Zoho Billing, aka subscriptions, payment recovery, right? So looking at failed payments, following up with people, escalating to humans if there are multiple failures, looking at the usage patterns and looking for potential upgrades, right? So that's really nice. Refund tracker, right? So so being able to monitor a refund request, summarizing those on a contact, looking at campaigns, having a little AI to essentially scrape your outbound campaigns and give you some insights. We do see a lot of people who use campaigns and they're just blasting it out, right? But it takes a lot of time and effort to really analyze what's working and what isn't. So having a little bot to summarize that for you should save quite a lot of time. CRM, unsurprisingly, has the most. So looking at why did we lose a deal, uh, essentially handling the SDR role. So chasing down, targeting emails, right? Going back and forth. It's not gonna be able to take the call, but maybe it can schedule the call for you. Follow-up management, coaching the sales team, right? So giving them feedback on an email that they sent. Looking at specific deals, right? So trying to get a better idea of the win probability. A lot of the times in CRM, we assign these probabilities connected to stages, right? But they're just best guesses and they don't take in any of the context about that specific deal, right? So being able to look at email communications, the follow-up cycle, and get kind of a tighter look into our likelihood to win is going to be great. Quote generator, this could be a huge time saver, right? If you've been going back and forth via email with a client about what products or services they want, and this thing could just create V1 of a quote. Now, obviously, you're going to want to review this <laughs> and make sure that it's correct before you send it out. But saving that time could be really, really nice. Looking at revenue growth around upsell and cross-sell, as well as looking at kind of a summary of what's going on with a deal a couple days before the closing date. Just to, again, ideally get that thing actually closed on time. Looking at desk, I mean, support specialist, responding to tickets. We've talked about this a little bit from the perspective of Zia LLM, actually looking at the knowledge base and kind of pre-writing responses. Once you go to a full agent, the thought would be a user doesn't even have to touch it. Again, be careful with that. <laughs> Make sure that your knowledge base is very accurate and very complete before you turn this type of thing on. Looking at next best steps, automatically classifying tickets. Oh, I can't tell you how nice that one is. Again, this is something where you can write a big, long, complicated if-then statement, right? Where you're trying to look for certain keywords in what the customer had sent in in the ticket content. Being able to have a smarter tool do that for you is just going to increase the percent that we can actually automatically classify. As we go down the list, I mean, auto classification of expenses, automatically summary expense reports just to speed up the submission and approval process. I kind of like this one, a little auto acknowledge agent. So if you're outside of working hours or if you just have like a bunch of emails that come in, you could turn this thing on and just go like, hey, Tyler's really busy. He's going to get to this as soon as he can, right? Just a little customer experience thing. Again, categorizers. You're going to see this a lot with agents. It's going to be a big V1 of how people use these is 
categorizing and classifying is just a big pain in the butt with traditional scripting methods because they're so specific, but really you want it to be a more broad approach. Looking at feedback from webinars and meetings, handling assistance or assistance around payroll. So basic questions can get answered automatically. Candidates, pulling them out of emails and resumes. This is kind of nice. I mean, again, you want people to fill out that form, but if somebody did send an email, might be nice to convert them as a candidate anyways. And then lastly, under sales IQ, summarizing the chat, as well as handling some of the missed chats and auto responding via email. These are just going to be the first round of agents that they roll out. I would expect a lot more over time, but will be a really good starting point. And then again, keep in mind, you are going to have a full agent studio where you can build these all on your own. I promise you the second that I get access to that, we're going to be creating a bunch of tutorials and example videos trying to give you some good places to start from. In the meantime, if you do get access before we've got videos out, I always recommend like turn one of these on or maybe, you know, activate it. Take a look at what it's doing and learn from that in order to be able to build your own versions that can do the specific jobs that you would like them to do. Really excited to see all of this news and updates coming out. We had talked about this a little while ago and then it was a bit of radio silence, right? Where you would see these odds and ends little updates, but not a lot of detail about the exact full rollout schedule. Keep an eye on this space. We're really excited about it. And we're going to be creating, like I mentioned, a bunch of content on this as we get our hands on it to try to get it into your hands as soon as humanly possible in a way that you can actually use it. With that, I think we're all wrapped up for today. If you found the video useful, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with what you're most excited about to get your hands on here. Are you more of an LLM person looking to get into agents? Maybe you have a system already and you just need the MCP to finalize it. And while you're down there, click over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you need any help setting these up inside of your own account. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time. Thank you.